Welcome to today's MJ News Digest, August 21, 2020. Here are today's headlines. BTS love MJ. MJ Estate vs. Funko. Michael saves Ivan the Gorilla. MJ inspired screen movie The Estate vs. MJ fans and new Michael Jackson podcast. So our first story is of course BTS with their new single and music video, including some uh, Michael Jackson inspiration. So BTS ins uh, teased this recently uh, using some MJ style dance moves. And now we have the new video. Uh, this news article says that uh, the group are seen emulating MJ's iconic poses, including the iconic leg kick. Uh, you'll also find the moonwalk. Uh, it's really heavily influenced by Michael Jackson. It's great to see BTS sharing the MJ love uh, over on Twitter. Taj Jackson has professed his love for this. Um, and I'm wondering, I mean, ever since I saw the trailer or the teaser, I wondered if there was something even bigger about to come with the album. Uh, as far as I know, at the time of recording, there's been no information released about the album in regards to track listing, but I'm wondering if there's a Michael Jackson cover or at least a Michael Jackson sample in one of the songs. It just seems that the promotion around this uh, video and album so far has been very much Jackson centric. Could there be a duet on there? I think there's going to be something more to do with Michael Jackson. Let's wait and see. So our next story is from TMZ, unfortunately. So this is the estate versus uh, Funko. Michael Jackson's Funko Pop dolls might belong on a shelf somewhere, but they had no business being on the company's site for years and his estate has just put an end to it. Uh, sources tell TMZ that attorneys for the MJ estate recently noticed the Funko Pop was still using images of the rare MJ collection that hit the market nearly a decade ago. Um, and uh, the fact is that the estate, they did do a two year licensing deal um, and that ended, I think it was back in 2011 or 2013 uh, but the, they were still using the Michael Jackson images on the website the estate did not like this and so they have ordered the images to be taken down which Funko have done uh, they're saying that uh, these dolls are collectible items now the smooth criminal one apparently sold for nearly $300 uh, nice dolls uh, but I'm wondering why uh, why the estate have done this i guess it's because they're protecting michael's uh, likeness and image so our next story is something that i've never heard about before it's really interesting uh, so this is about uh, it's referencing a new disney plus film disney is taking a crack at the one and only ivan uh, here's the real story so it's a really tragic story uh, about a, a gorilla that was kept in captivity in a shopping mall of all places for 25 years uh, it says here that the new film from Disney, the one and only Ivan, tells a true story <coughs> of a gorilla who is put on display in a mall for the entertainment of people. Uh, the film, which is being released on August 21st, uh, stars, oh, that's today, stars Brian Cranston and Sam Rockwell. Uh, and there is an MJ uh, connection. So we'll just scroll down here to this uh to the MJ reference um, and after reading this I did do some research and we'll go into that in a minute uh, so where is it here we go. So, uh, in the early 1990s, animal rights groups and other concerned people began to question whether Ivan's living in captivity was the best place for him. In March 91, protests were put on outside the shopping centre, pushing for Ivan to be put in a better home, and it caught the attention of pop singer Michael Jackson, who offered his home for Ivan. Now, I don't know if this is going to be in the film, uh, but I hadn't heard of Michael Jackson offering Neverland to Ivan, or Michael Jackson getting involved with uh, <laughs> Ivan. So, as I said, I did do some research, and here's what I I came up with. Uh, so this was published on April, well, this is from April 29, 1992. Uh, nice to see a site without loads of adverts. Uh, pop star Michael Jackson offers home to Gorilla Ivan. Uh, Michael Jackson is going ape over a department store. Gorilla, Ivan the Gorilla, who has lived 25 years in a concrete cage at Takamo's B&I Circus Store, has been offered a new home at Neverland. Uh, a National Geographic television documentary stirred public sympathy last year for the 28-year-old ape who has never seen another gorilla since his capture in the Congo in Africa. Very sad. Uh, several zoos offered to adopt the gorilla, but none of the offers quite matched Jackson's 2,700-acre retreat north of San 
Santa Barbara that includes a zoo populated with chimps, zebras, llamas, giraffes and a lion. Uh, because of all the news articles, Michael Jackson feels sorry for this particular critter and wants to give it a home, said Captain Jim Zobel, exotic animal specialist for the California Department of Fish and Game. Zobel said Jackson has applied for permits to build a new facility to house Ivan and possibly another gorilla. Uh, Jackson's publicist said she didn't know anything about the offer. But Ivan's owner, Ron Irwin, recently turned down a bid to move Ivan to Seattle's Woodland Park Zoo, saying he was negotiating with a private facility in California, i.e. Neverland. Uh, Ivan would not identify Jackson as the owner, but described the facility as probably one of the best situations, if not in the world, certainly in the US, for a gorilla. At his California home, Ivan would have indoor and outdoor habitats and a female companion. But animal rights activists wonder if Neverland is the best place for the gorilla. Seattle Zoo may be better because it would take Jackson years to build a gorilla compound and find a female companion, apparently. Uh, so someone from the Animal Welfare Society uh, wrote Jackson a letter asking him to drop the offer. Uh, Michael Jackson certainly has the wherewithal to build a Taj Mahal for gorillas, but we would just like him to know the options. Uh, then it goes on to say that Jackson's retreat is regularly inspected, inspected by the U.S. Department of Agriculture and gets good ratings, said Homer Malaby, USDA animal care specialist based in San Francisco. Uh, there would be no objections to that animal being moved to California, i.e. Neverland. There's no question if Michael Jackson would build the facilities, they would more than meet our specifications. And I just thought that was really lovely. It's not just about Michael Jackson reaching out and trying to help this gorilla, but going that extra mile and wanting to build a facility and find a female mate. So did Ivan end up in Neverland? Well, no, he didn't, unfortunately. He ended up in a zoo in Atlanta. Uh, so what happened to Ivan? Let's have a look. So Ivan spent his, former, his final years in Atlanta. Uh, he formed a family with other gorillas he met there and he mated for the first time with the female gorilla Kinyani although he had no offspring and it was with his new family where he spent his final years. Uh, so here that Ivan can usually be seen in his habitat on a nice sunny day sitting at the top of the hill looking out over the zoo but he died during a diagnostic exam in 2012. He was 50 years old making him one of the oldest gorillas in captivity. After a long fraught life Ivan went peacefully. What a lovely story, especially with Michael's involvement trying to reach out and help another animal. Okay, so this is from Showbiz Cheat Sheet. Haven't heard from them for a while. How Michael Jackson influenced the horror film Scream. Okay, let's have a look at this. So apparently one of his songs helped, I wonder which one, helped inspire a major aspect of the film. And then it says over time, the Jackson family has become more involved with the Scream franchise. So let's see where this is going. Uh, so it's saying here that apparently uh, Bob Weinstein of the Weinstein Company disliked the film's original title, which was Scary Movie. Uh, he thought that was too comedic. Uh, and so it was changed, obviously, to Scream. And why was it changed to Scream? Well, apparently Harvey Weinstein decided to call the film uh, Scream uh, after being inspired by the title of the duet between Michael and Janet Jackson. So that video came out, was it 95? And the Scream video, uh, the uh, Scream movie came out in 96. Uh, I did do a bit of research to see if this was true. Apparently it was true. Uh, so the title works for the movie uh, and then it goes on to say the other connections between Jackson family will obviously that's Paris. Paris was in the Scream uh, TV series. So that's how Michael Jackson inspired the Scream movie. So Oh dear, here we go on to the Michael Jackson Frequently Asked Questions, which has been recently updated by the MJ Estate, and it's causing quite a bit of controversy among the fans. I'm not going to be reading this word for word, but I'm just going to give my opinion about this, and there's something in particular uh, I want to say that I haven't shared yet on this channel, uh, but it's just a... A little uh, foreshadowing of something that is coming to this channel. So, why doesn't the estate release more project projects? Well, they don't really answer that. Uh, instead, they uh, list all the things that they have done. And when you read through this, yeah, the estate have done a lot. But I would argue for quality over quantity. 
and uh, what they have put out so far a lot of what they have put out the majority has not been uh, quality in my opinion and in a lot of fans opinions as well uh, it says here that Michael continues to be the number one streaming catalog artist in the world so that's like the lack the legacy artist but I would say that has more to do with MJ fans than it has to do with the MJ estate uh, the next thing they've updated is why doesn't the estate release all the songs that the fans have leaked? That's an interesting way to frame the question. Uh, shouldn't that more be why doesn't the estate release Michael Jackson's unreleased songs? It kind of it seems that they're putting the onus on the fans having leaked this stuff. Uh, so they're saying that if we release demos by themselves, they would not show Michael in his best light and would not be commercially success, uh, successful because they are by definition unfinished. But having said that, the MJ Estate did release the demos on the Bad 25 uh, album or the box set and also on the Escape album on the second disc. So they could release demos with uh, another package or uh, to complement a package, much like the Prince Estate are doing with the releases of his albums and also the Beatles estate have done that as well and they have been commercially successful and the MJ estate knows that they will be commercially successful because as they said previously Michael Jackson is the number one uh, streaming le legacy artist in the world so that doesn't really make much sense. Uh, then they go on to say that they go by one of Michael's philosophies as a guide which is the quality goes in before the name goes on. Well they didn't think about that when they released the Michael album including three songs that had nothing to do with Michael Jackson and weren't even sung by Michael Jackson. They do reference that in one of the answers which I thought was a bit cheeky uh, to be honest. Uh, it gets a lot more problematic from here. Uh, <sighs> What are your thoughts on this? Uh, I don't even need to ask, I don't think. Although having said that, I have seen some fans uh, complaining about other fans saying that they think the MJ Estate are doing a very good job. Uh, why isn't there a permanent Michael Jackson channel on Sirius XM? Uh, why isn't there a History 25 release or a History concert film? Again, they're blaming COVID, much like they did a month or so ago on Twitter. Uh, but as Damien Shields recently said on Twitter, this lockdown would have been the perfect time to release something to streaming platforms. Uh, but they're saying that they've been unable to do that. Uh, they do still have plans to celebrate history with appropriate audio and audio visual elements, whatever that means. Uh, and they don't believe in making announcements until they can do that properly. Uh, why doesn't the Michael Jackson estate do all of the things that other estates do? Ooh, so this is quite problematic. Really, in this answer, they are reigniting this supposed feud between Prince and Michael Jackson. They're saying that you can't compare Prince and Michael Jackson and you can't compare the Prince estate with the Michael Jackson estate. The only reason why the MJ estate is saying that you can't compare the two estates is because they know that the Prince estate are doing a much better job than the MJ estate. Perhaps the MJ estate is more is making more money, um, but I don't think the MJ estate are doing more for Michael's legacy than the Prince estate is doing for Prince's legacy. Uh, they need to be listening to the fans, the MJ estate. They are targeting new fans rather the, than the existing fan base. It's the existing fan base which are really supporting Michael and getting Michael's name out there, which is why he is number one on the streaming services. The estate really have done very little uh, in regards to targeting things for the uh, fans. We need box sets. There is a lot of unreleased stuff that they could be releasing. Uh, will the estate upgrade Michael's short films to 4K? Oh, this is, I'm sorry to say this, but this is a load of bollocks. They're basically saying that they're out, they are unable to do this. Um, that there's very uh, poor uh, material, source material, or in some cases they don't even have the original source material. Well, I call bollocks, and the reason for that is because you do not need the original source material to restore uh, film or uh, video and audio. Uh, there's a recent video from uh, a Star Wars fan who has upgraded or is in the process of upgrading the original Star Wars film A New Hope to 4K without using the original source material and the results are mind-blowing. They're amazing. We know that MJ fans have also used artificial intelligence to upscale um, and although it's not uh, perfect 
perfect, it's a lot better than uh, what we're being offered on the MJ YouTube channel and on uh, DVDs, etc. Uh, why isn't why hasn't the estate made a documentary pro proclaiming Michael's innocence? Okay, so here it says. The fans can't and won't ever know what the estate has done behind the scenes. The estate doesn't always want to be public, public knowledge or credited for what it does. The important thing here is where they say the fans can't and won't know what the estate has done behind the scenes. Now I am currently investigating something that the estate have done behind the scenes regarding MJ's innocence. Uh, I can't say much more about this but uh, the reason why the estate can't public, publicly acknowledge is because it would impact on the HBO case. So I have to be very quiet about this at the moment, um, but I'm hoping that I can say something about that at some point. Anyway, okay, so our next story is about a new Michael Jackson podcast, and it comes from Hate the Jess over on Twitter. Hate the Jess is a long-term, long-time uh, MJ News Digest fan and follower, and she is an all-round funny person. Okay, so she sent me this. Uh, it is, this is from Not Conscious with Mark Pulse. It's a podcast. Uh, so on the 28th of August at 4 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, there will be the premiere of our special Square One podcast with two guests directly involved with Square One. The first guest is Hate the Jess, yay! Uh, she was marketing director and research assistant, and our surprise mystery guest was in the MJ documentary. So who could it be? Well, you'll have to wait until uh, nearer the time. So the Not Conscious uh, podcast uh, is linked. It's available on uh, the Apple podcast platform. It's also available on all good uh, podcast platforms. I will be linking this in the description below and I hope you listen to it. Hate the Jess is making her podcast debut. And we go on to our YouTube recommendation of the day, and of course it has to be the BTS Dynamite official music video, really heavily MJ inspired. I will play a very small part of this, I'm sure you're one of the 31 million people that have already watched this, but I will link this in the description. Oh, thank you BTS, that's it for today's MJ News Digest. Thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it. Please like, comment and subscribe because the best is yet to come.